Hey everyone, my name's Jason. I uh, just want to do a really quick video here. Um, as many of you know, I have been poking the ATF bear with rapid fire devices and techniques since 2006, I believe it was, with my rubber band assisted bump fire technique. Um, you can actually, you know, I'll put a link in the description. Of, you know, they're pretty old videos. Um, the most recent piece of technology and innovation in my opinion has been this rear breed trigger um, this trigger like other devices is nothing more than firearms industry trying to be compliant with current federal law um, if you are a democrat or hate guns you would call that a loophole um, rear breed did not seek ATF approval for their trigger because there was already an approval um, approval letter for the Tacon 3MR trigger which is classified they don't call it a forced reset they call it a positive reset trigger I believe there's I, th I believe the 3MR is a three position um, instead of just the two um, so regarding letters, um, and if I remember correctly, Slidefire and Fostech did not originally, I believe they went, they based their product on, or they brought their product to market based on the Aikens Accelerator patent and an approval letter. Um, the Aikens Accelerator was a kind of a, basically a bump stock, but it bumps, it bump fired automatically because it had a spring in it. And ATF approved a different version of that with the spring, and then later said, I ended up buying one, and uh, I had to end up, I had to end up sending my spring in because ATF after several years said it was a machine the spring was a machine gun so ATF has said a shoestring is a machine gun a spring is a machine gun a piece of plastic is a machine gun um, I wonder if I folded up a piece of paper in the shape of a swift link if they would consider that a machine gun probably shouldn't do that then um, <laughs> I don't own a dog so um, anyway um, the statutory definition of a machine gun does not involve the speed in which a firearm can empty a magazine uh, and I believe that's where ATF kind of is viewing their or making their decision on um, apparently they got a couple of these triggers they saw how fast it would go and oh that's a machine gun um, because they're they're pretty hung up on the single function phrase what they call it pull I'll get to that too in a minute um, like uh, normal AR-15 triggers, you have a trigger, you have a hammer, and you have a disconnector. So the FRT only uses a trigger and a hammer. So the hammer resets directly to the trigger, and and that's and basically that combination. What you get is a very short trigger break followed up by a mechanical reset. And, and then you put in with the locking bar so when the when the bolt is out of battery the trigger is locked and cannot function whatsoever um, ATF used to say we don't care how fast your gun shoots we care how your gun shoots fast apparently not anymore So in the letter, 
in the ATF letter to rare breed, they specifically mention that there is a single pull of the trigger. And pay attention to the word pull, because they do this a lot. Um, the statutory definition of a machine gun does not say single pull of the trigger. It says single function of the trigger. Maintaining pressure or pulling is a function of the shooter, not a function of the trigger. Um, so you, you'll see a lot of that. Like if you go on the ATF website right now and look up machine gun, it'll give you the statutory definition of a machine gun. It says single function of the trigger. And then if you search for bump stock in that the brief description, they say single pull of the trigger results in an automatic firing cycle and that's how they justified it. Um, so throwing this word swap back at the ATF, would the Browning M2 heavy belt fed machine gun with the spade grip even be a machine gun if pull is the magic word? Because with that gun you push the trigger instead of pull. Um, by simply changing one word in the legal definition um, gives different meaning to what is and isn't a machine gun. Um, the uh, another another way you can tell that the rare breed trigger is not a machine gun. If anybody's fired an M16, you hold the trigger down and you know it, the gun fires until you let off the trigger, the, the uh, bullets are empty. Um, the, if you do that with the rare breed trigger, the gun fires a single round and then the and basically the bolt jams so you're if you, again if you hold down the trigger as if you were shooting an M16 you get one you get one round goes off and then the gun jams up and i think that's in the beginning people were getting that a lot kid because they were treating it like a M16 um, also with the rare breed trigger you can actually physically feel after you immediately after you fire the, the gun the trigger kicks your finger back forward um, if you maintain the correct pressure on the trigger um, so that's basically what I gotta say today uh, the Unfortunately, this has to be litigated in court, and thankfully, Rare Breed is doing just that. Um, I, I've seen some comments that said, "Oh, we need to, we need to sue Rare Breed because we bought this thing in good faith." And uh, don't do that. Don't. I mean, seriously, don't sue them. You know, they they need they need to focus on fighting this. Um, they don't need to fight you. They need to fight the ATF on this. Um, and I would encourage everybody to find, if I can find a link, I'll put it in the description below, but read Rare Breed's attorney, who I believe is the owner of the company. Um, read his letter back to ATF. It, it's very well written. It brings up some other issues and bravo that's all i gotta say to him he, he did an excellent job on it um anyway like comment subscribe and i'll talk to you guys later